So today I thought I'd talk about something a little bit different. Um, and then I'm going to try to keep this video around under 10 minutes. So whenever I hit that mark, I'm going to just stop. Uh, so this is Magic the Gathering, and uh, Magic the Gathering was something that I got into very early on. Uh, I think it was about when Antiquities was coming out, somewhere in the early 90s. Uh, so of all the different things I've collected, this one, Magic the Gathering, definitely had the easily the highest appreciation and value of anything I ever collected. And... Um, I'd say the worst is probably sports cards. I made the mistake of collecting sports cards in the in the eighties and nineties, and they're all trash. I'm I'm trying to sell them uh, on eBay, and I have occasionally do get a sale, but uh, there is very little interest, no matter what the uh, popularity of the player. So this this is uh, one of my favorite sets. This is Arabian Nights, and it's just a small sampling of the cards I have. I've also sold a ton of magic cards, but I've kept some of the best. And um, so these are some of the, the best from, from that particular series with the Serendib Jin, Old Man of the Sea. And these are in really, really, really good condition. Some of them have never even been played. Uh, Open them from packs. If I could go back in time, I'd tell my, myself back then, buy every single card that you possibly can, particularly um, alphas and betas. We have Aladdin, Brass Man. These are really nice cards. I love how they look like something created a long time ago. Really nice cards. I love this set. Oasis, Cyclone. So I actually got pretty good at the game, and I had a heck of a collection um, I only ever competed in one tournament, and uh, I was undefeated up until the final guy. Basically, I used a very defensive deck, and uh, the point of the deck was to, to force myself and my opponent to draw as many cards as possible. I was using the Howling Mine, and uh, at first, your, the, my opponent would, would seem happy. You know, you get to draw lots and lots of cards, more cards, more cards, more cards. And then it would dawn on them that they could not do anything against me. And any time they started, I didn't even, I think I had one creature in the entire deck just for, you know, some kind of special case. But all sorts of cards that one would have controlling a creature or killing a creature were useless for them. Because I, I only had one creature. Um, and so the point of it was to just run them out of cards. And which is which is a very unusual way to win, and um, it was a, a very frustrating game or deck to play against. Um, but the person that won the tournament, his deck was just too fast, and I can't remember if I beat him at all. But he just was coming out too fast before I could set up my my lock and uh, and beat him. Um, so I played probably until the early two thousands. And then the group that I was playing with just kind of broke apart and the cards would just sit there in in a box. And so uh, I, I would watch them appreciate over time. And I, I, you know, I kind of wasn't paying attention. And I was like, oh my God, these cards are worth quite a bit. I made a big mistake early on. I had most of the, I had a Time Walk, Time Twister, beautiful cards, and I sold them uh, for not a ton of money. But I do have a, a lot of cards that that are of that level that I did keep. But I, I really wish I had kept those cards. But like I said, this is just a small sample. What I, One thing I love about Magic cards, I love the way they look. But as an investment, you know, at this point, they're so small. You know, it's really nice. There's, they're certainly smaller than a lot of other things that I've collected over the years. And I just think they're really nice. Uh, the, the, the series has been going on, or the game's been going on for about 30 years. And um, so uh, hopefully they'll hold their value. Um, if I ever started playing the game again, I would probably just start with whatever the current sets are rather than go back and um, use my old sets, which are, they're all broken apart. So uh, I'd have to go from memory on what to create. So the other thing... I was going to start on is um, 
the video game collectible card games and uh i i have gotten a few and so i'll start with shadowverse and that's i'll start and end there but i do have other ones almost all of these card games are digital only so if i i go out here and i look at some of the sites on the top uh collectible card games or battle card games or whatever whatever you call them almost all of them are uh, digital only so they are hard to get and unless you want to play digital only um, slay the spire it is physical but it's too expensive now I, i'm not so monster train is one of them and i do have monster train and uh, some of them will be a regular release a lot of these this one i got through a limited run games and but it's a regular release and I could have bought it I'm sure off of Amazon um, another game I got and uh, this is another one it's not limited run but it's like uh, strictly limited or something and uh, this is another card game this one I'm willing to bet is going to eventually be worth a fair amount because it's generally considered just physical or digital only the reason I, I much prefer physical is because um, even though for GameStop you can only sell these games for pennies on the dollar, I could sell them on eBay for sometimes what I paid for it, sometimes more, depending upon the scarcity of the game. So it certainly makes a lot of sense, particularly since the digital versions are generally the same price as the uh, physical. So if I can sell it when I'm done with it for the same price, well, it makes sense to do that and then go out and get another game with with no loss. Um, this game I played the hell out of. And uh, if I had complaints about it, my first complaint would be, and this, this kind of was annoying me early on, is I felt like the story was getting in the way of the gameplay. I just wanted to card battle and there was a lot of story and you couldn't, you had to get through sections of the story before you could get back into card battling. And I just wanted to battle. Um, I wouldn't have cared if they were either no story or just a, a paper thin story. Uh, my other issue is that, and so far I, I have not tried monster train yet but i have tried inscription these are definitely stripped down from magic the gathering they do not have nearly the complexity and that's probably a good thing i'd say the only issue the the main issue i have is it's damn near impossible to create a, a strong theme deck and i love to create theme decks and you really couldn't the other issue i had was that um as you get into the game, your opponents get stronger and stronger. And so you certainly have the ability to build a deck. I could not build a deck that was stronger than the um, uh, the decks you'd get given that were created by the, the game makers. Um, I wanted to go out and just do my own thing, create my own deck, but I couldn't beat these opponents without resorting to the pre-made decks. So that kind of bothered me because I didn't want to use a, use a pre-made deck. I wanted to create something um, on my own and uh, battle them. So, so that kind of annoyed me. But I did get through the entire game. There were cards I never found, and I really don't know where they're at. I thought I'd searched every single location, but... Um, I did not get every single card, and I, I, I kind of wanted to do that. But I did enjoy the game. I gave it five stars. I, I thought this was a really good game. Um, Inscription, I'm going to talk about on another time. Uh, it's a three-section game, and I've gotten through two sections, and I'm in the third section now. And um, it's an interesting game. It's a, it's a roguelike game. A uh, card battler, and I thought, what an interesting combination. But then, as I did more research online, there's a lot of roguelike. Uh, and if you don't know what a roguelike ga game is, um, one example is Hades, and I had never heard of a roguelike until Hades. And it's basically 
you you go out, you try and get as far as you can, and then start over again, start over again, and start over again. And um, in the case of Hades, you simply, I mean, I guess you can win, but you're always put back at the beginning. Um, so this is a roguelike game, and I'll describe it more later. But anyway, so this is kind of the Magic the Gathering collectible card game and some of these Switch games. And I do have another one on the way, but they, they are, although they are not rare, physical versions of these games are kind of rare. So anyway, that's uh, collectible card games, including those on the Switch.